wanted to do a, a, a video series for some time now on, on RV, um, RV power and, and uh, solar, or more precisely, um, RV lithium um, and, and solar, uh, which would include all basic components necessary to, uh, uh, to basically implement a solar and lithium solution into your RV. Um, so this is the introduction video. I'm just going to go over a quick agenda. I have it on my iPad, so you'll see me kind of glancing away. Um, but uh, but part of that, we're just also going to go through and just take a look at the uh, the key components. Now, we've just ordered a KZ Venom 3911 TK. Um, this is a toy hauler. Uh, it, it normally comes, um, it's considered an option, but it comes with an Onan generator. Uh, we didn't want the Onan generator, so we actually deleted that, and we saved about $3,500 on the price of of the uh, the Venom um, just by removing that generator, um, which really helped us, um, you know, kind of take that money and, and be able to invest it in the actual lithium batteries and solar and whatnot. So uh, you'd be surprised how much lithium you can actually buy for $3,500 um, if you build it yourself. So... Um, We'll, we'll talk about generators a little bit too because solar isn't a, a reliable source. Um, if you've got heavy snowfall or heavy rain, you're not going to be producing a lot of energy that way. Um, and no matter how good your lithium battery bank is, you're, at some point you're going to need a reliable source of, of energy um, to top that off. So um, I'll pick up my iPad here. Make sure I'm staying on task. The mind does wander. Um, so our agenda is going to be initially just to go over all the parts, um, at least parts of the, the, the setup that I'm going to be um, putting in, in, in our fifth wheel. Um, after that, I'm going to spend some time talking about building your lithium battery pack. Now, I mentioned, you know, you can actually get a lot of, of lithium battery for $3,500. A lot of people spend a, a couple grand or more on um, AGM batteries. And um, if you build your own packs, you can actually get quite a, um, a large lithium bank for $3,500. So we'll, uh, we'll go through building that actual pack and the technique that I'm going to use for balancing, um, which is called bottom balance. Um, the next thing that we'll do is we'll get into charging and discharging. And this is where I'm going to focus a little bit on the Victron Multi Plus um, line of, of inverters and chargers. Uh, they do require, um, they, they can be used out of the box, uh, but if you want to really get in and tweak the settings or use some of their assistants, which are little apps that run or little programs that run, um, you, you really need to get in and be able to program those with a, with a PC. Um, let's see, what else we got? Uh, 24 volt versus 12 volt. I'm going to be doing a 24 volt system and... Um, there, there's a number of reasons why, but um, at the end of the day, uh, you don't have to put, um, you know, four foot diameter battery cables, you know, uh, the 12 volt systems, especially when you hook up uh, cables to your, to your inverter, you've got to put some pretty hefty uh, cables on that. It also helps with things like fuses, um, not that it's a big issue, but you can use lower amperage um, uh, components. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how I'm going to deal with 12 volt in my system because at the end of the day, the trailer itself runs on 12 volt. I'm not building a bus from scratch where I can, you know, implement uh, all 24 volt appliances. I've got to still deal with 12 volts. Um, there's a couple of different ways we can deal with that. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about solar, but I um, haven't really dug into uh, what panels I'm going to use. Um, since we don't have the trailer yet, I'm, I'm really, uh, I didn't want to estimate the, the size or the, the area that we have on the roof. I wanted to wait till I get that in so I can look at things like shadowing, the curvature, curvature of the roof. Um, really want to be able to maximize that. I hate to use the 100 watt panels. Um, we have a Sun Electronic, uh, or Sun Electric, uh, distributor, um, here in Phoenix that I can, that I can uh, buy in bulk from, um, get some high quality panels, hopefully larger, you know, more in the two, 250 watt, uh, really maximize the space as much as possible. So um, after that, we'll be talking about generator and um, 
what size generator do you really need? Uh, you know, if you think about really just needing to top off your batteries, uh, you know, when you have a good, when you have a good battery bank, whether it's lead acid or AGM or lithium, um, you don't really, you, you, you can run large appliances like ACs and microwaves and, you know, washer and dryers or, or whatever else you have running. Um, so it really doesn't become an issue of um, needing a large enough generator to run all that. It becomes more of an issue of how do you, how do you reliably top off your batteries um, and in times when you are running air conditioners, how do you do it in a way that uh, you can keep those batteries topped off long enough to get through your um, your hot day? Um, okay, and then the last thing that we'll be doing, um, and this will probably be very much hands-on um, as I start to implement all this stuff into my trailer, we'll be integrating into your RV. How do you take these, um, you know, inverter chargers, your solar panels, your your uh, MPPT controllers or whatever solar controllers you use. Uh, you know, if you're using 12, 24 volts, 12 volt converters, um, how do you get all these things uh, kind of implemented or, or integrated into your electrical system? Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a number of different techniques for that. Um, my, my fifth wheel is actually gonna already have a transfer switch in it, which uh, sits between uh, even though I'm not ordering the generator, I still have um, generator prep, which comes as a, as a standard package. Um, so there's there's the wiring for the generator. That wiring goes to a transfer switch as well. Uh, does the shore power go to that transfer switch? So once I get the RV, I'll be able to kind of you know tear that apart and take a look at it, how it's been set up and, and make some decisions about how I want to integrate um, my lithium uh, and and solar. Uh, um, build or whatever you want to call it uh, into the trailer itself and there like I said there's a couple of different techniques you can take um, especially when dealing with a device like a Victron um, so you know we'll just have to kind of you know get a lay of the land and make some decisions based on what's best and and what's easiest without you know tearing too many holes in the trailer um, so that's it the next video will actually be going through all the parts or most of the parts that I already have um, in, in the solution, um, and, and talking a little bit about each of those. So have a good day guys. Bye.